So we're here with Marcus Erickson. Marcus, uh, you became an IndyCar winner this year on a street circuit. Um, talk about uh, how you've adapted to American-style street circuits. I know they're a lot different than they are in Europe. Yeah, they're pretty bumpy, <laughs> and it looks like Nashville here is also going to be pretty bumpy, but I, I like it. It puts a lot of character to the tracks, and it makes it quite difficult as a driver because you need to find all the small sort of tricks, and, and it's sometimes not obvious what is the right uh, way to drive the track, so you need to really feel it out and be open-minded when you're out there and driving, and uh, sort of just get, get Get, get going with it, you know, like it's, it's, it's crazy when I get to go to Detroit the first time, did the first couple of laps and you're like, oh, I'm never going to get up to speed here because it's just such a crazy place and then you sort of get your head down, start working and then and you get there, so it's going to be fun to yeah, experience this, this track and like you said, I had my first win on a street course, so I had some good, uh, good feelings uh, going into this weekend. What does what is your personal preparation process for a track like this? Because you obviously can't test here. Um, you have a simulator, but but how accurate is that? Yeah, that's what, what we're gonna find out in practice, I guess. But uh, yeah, we've done quite a few laps in the simulator to prepare. But like I say, it's, it's quite I I think quite far from the from the real uh, track, so it's gonna be difficult. But it's the same for everyone. You know, we're all in the same same place here. You know, no one has been here and, and done laps, so. It's going to be interesting that way because, you know, normally for me coming here a couple of years ago, it's a lot of tracks where I'm still learning and, and you go up against guys like Dixon and, and that's been around for 20 years on these types of tracks. So it's definitely better for, for us to come to a track here where, where everyone starts uh, from scratch. Uh, there's a lot of people, myself included, drawing similarities between this track and uh, the Baku circuit. Do you see that? Uh, because there's certainly some really tight areas on this track. Yeah, that was the first thing I said about that uh, when you go over the bridge and it's, I think it's five, six, seven, eight, uh, that section looks very similar to Baku around the castle there. So I think definitely it uh, has quite a lot of similarities to, to that track. And final question from me, um, you've obviously got some seriously tough teammate competition uh, at Ganassi. What is that like to be in a team where it's so competitive and yet at the same time it seems like you guys really work well together? Yeah, we, we get along really well and, and we, I think we push each other, uh, which is always what you want, you know, and we have three cars in the top five in the championship and that shows that, you know, how, how good of a job the whole team has done and uh, I think our different sort of experiences and driving styles and he, also Jimmy and, and Tony, you know, they've been contributing a lot to, to the success, so uh, I think it's a great thing and, and we just got to keep, keep doing that for the rest of the year and make sure one of us is the champion. Scott, a new circuit? Um, tell me about your process, how you go about learning a track that you can't test on. Uh, yeah, I think for, well, it's changed a lot since I first started. You know, I think uh, with simulation and, and even, uh, you know, the scanning process and a lot of things that they do, obviously being a, a temporary circuit is always hard to get the radiuses completely right, but uh, to get the flow of the track definitely helps. So, yeah, I think all of our team and all of the Honda drivers have been on the simulator to, to get that flow down. How accurate that is, we'll have to wait and uh, find out. But actually, it seems a bit wider in a lot of areas uh, once we did that kind of recon lap this morning than, than what it was on the simulator. So, yeah, there's there's lots of different ways to, to do it, but I feel like street courses and there's always one that relates to another. You know, maybe this is more like Detroit, maybe a little bit more like St. Pete. So we'll have to see how that plays. Yeah, a lot of the paddock was doing a track walk yesterday. I know I saw you out there. Can you talk to a layman about, like, what is it, what is an advantage of doing a track walk? What can you learn from physically walking the circuit? Uh, I've always looked, them, looked at them as more of a social event. <laughs> um, I don't know. Like it, it's, uh, some guys like doing them. Some guys don't. Um, you know, I think it's interesting to you know, just see where the different surfaces are. Uh, I think a lot of the time, especially when it's brand new, is just trying to see where the walls lay, where runoff areas are, um, maybe concerns that you have with the track layout that you can kind of, you know, put forward to, to the series. So, yeah, I think there's lots of different reasons for why you do them. Um, but, yeah, it's a nice brisk walk and some really hot, you know, summer weather. But, uh, no, it's cool. And final question, for me at least, um, we're, it seems like a fairly tight circuit in some places. Are you expecting a, a race full of carnage, or are you expecting a race where it's going to be the fastest guy and the fastest driver wins it? Yeah, it'd be interesting. The, a lot of the other things too, right, is strategy. You know, uh, I think what you need to do a lot of times is try and make sure there's a two-stop and a three-stop going on, which they've eliminated a lot of those this year just on sheer length of the race. You know, Mid-Ohio was a bit of a snoozer because of that. Um, so I think, I don't know, we'll, we'll see where a few mileage is for, for this weekend. But there's definitely some spots, you know, like turn four, if, you know, you do get 
caught up and, and roll into five, then it could block the track, you know. So there's going to be some uh, some interesting points. But um, I don't know. I feel like a lot of the tracks that hype up, there's going to be a lot of accidents. Then it goes green to checker, you know. So uh, who knows? It's IndyCar racing. It's always exciting and, and uh, something will happen that you don't expect. Hey, we're here with Dalton Kellett of AJ Foyt Racing. Dalton, uh, tell me a little bit about your uh, feelings about street circuit racing. I know it's kind of mixed. Some people like them. Some people hate them. What's kind of, do you feel comfortable here? Yeah, I'm pretty excited. I've got, sorry, I just put my phone <laughs> uh, Yeah, I've, I've always liked the street circuits. I think it's super exciting. I think from a, you know, especially from like a fan experience standpoint, I think they're some of the best events. It's like you're bringing the show to the city, right? It's right there. Uh, so I think it'll be a good, a awesome turnout. Um, from a driving standpoint, I've, you know, St. Pete was definitely one of my favorite tracks. And uh, Detroit was new for me this year. And, you know, absolutely love that circuit. So, yeah, I've, I've always liked like the street circuit, just the intensity of it and, you know, the the feeling of kind of being on a on a street circuit with, with the walls and all that. It's super exciting. And, uh, yeah, I, I think it's got the, the makings of a, of a good race for sure. Something I've been asking all the drivers, because this is a totally new circuit, obviously it's a street circuit, so you can't really do any testing. What have you kind of personally done to prep for this race? Because I'm sure it's very difficult and there's a lot of different approaches to take. For sure. I think, uh, you know, from my, my standpoint and the team standpoint, it's mostly kind of virtual simulation stuff. So we've, we've been using the, the Chevy Sim down in, in Charlotte there and doing a couple of days there. You know, they were able to create a pretty high fidelity model of, of, the, of the circuit with the bumps and all that. Um, so that, that that's, you know, that's great for getting that, that first sight picture and just the kind of flow of the track, your, your gears and whatnot. Um, and then, the, you know, the, the, the team's doing their laps and stuff to try to get their, you know, starting gears and ride heights and whatnot. But at the end of the day, it's 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 going to be that that just gives us sort of a starting point, and then we're going to have to iterate from there. I mean, the you know, the, there's inevitably going to be major differences from the real track, from the simulator to the to the real track. And you know, the other side of it is just kind of doing a bit of mental prep and trying to after the track walk, trying to picture okay, what what was different from from the sim and like how might that look in in the car? You know, trying to think about that a bit last night, and that's that's kind of what you can do. Uh, you know, when I think of street circuits and American open wheel racing, I think of your teammate Sebastian Bourdais. I mean, how big of a factor is that for you to have a driver with that sort of experience and that sort of success on these type of circuits? Yeah, it's, it's a huge, huge advantage. And, and you know, it's, it's a great thing for a kind of a younger, newer driver like, like myself to have that that you know access to that sort of talent and knowledge you know as as a resource and it's been very beneficial you know after the first session might be off a little bit but then i can go and compare some to seb's data and see what he's doing and, and kind of take those lessons and then progress through the rest of the weekend you know i think at detroit and then, you know the other street circuits this year what i've found is you know typically it's you know, finding time under just the initial breaking and all that so kind of know, knowing how that trend's been this year i'm hoping to kind of start this weekend already at that point and then kind of go from there there, but yeah, it's 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 great having Seb to work with, and he's he's a lot of fun to be around, and he's you know he's he's been very helpful. So I think it's it's all in all uh, positive. So last question for me: uh, the general consensus I've kind of gotten from asking around is that this is going to be a bit of a chaotic race. How do you approach a race like that? Do you do you try to get away from the pack? Do you try to lay back? Do you do you just kind of uh, play it by ear and and race as hard as you can? I mean, what do you what do you look at when you go to a, a difficult kind of track like this? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, you know the. The way the corner, some of the corners are, there is definitely some sections where it's wide and kind of funneling in. Um, I think the, you know, the overall, it, it'll probably, you know, if, if you approach it like the start of Indy, where it's like, you know, you're, you're really your main priority is like just getting through and not having, not, you know, keeping your nose clean. You know, the 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 incremental benefit of like, oh, maybe get a spot or two, but you know, kind of exposing yourself to extra risk like that, especially at an unknown circuit where no one really knows the flow of it probably isn't going to be worth it here but on the flip side it's like you, you can't really just like get in the back seat and let let everything happen you have to like still be aggressive and taking the taking the the initiative but just like knowing that there's a much higher chance of there being you know, a bit of a kerfuffle so just keep, just keeping your eyes up you know kerfuffle i like that word thank you dalton uh this is a man that probably doesn't need any introduction but he's pato award uh finally broke through got your first win this year oh, and tell me about <laughs> it oh my god Finally, right? <laughs> I know, yeah. It's, it seems like it's been such a long time coming because you've been so close. Um, now that you've broken through, um, how, how's that do for the confidence level? It's good, man. I just think it's good for, for myself, for the team, uh, for everyone involved. Um, and like I was telling everyone, it was worth the wait because I think the celebration was really cool. I had never shot guns before. I don't know if you guys could notice. <laughs> 
Uh, but I got two guns that I got to shoot multiple times. Um, and then Detroit, the fountain, like, man, honestly, I couldn't have chosen better, like, cooler celebrations to go with both the wins we've had this year. But, um, man, it's just like it, it, it addicts you. Like, it, it just it makes you addicted to that winning feeling. And that's what I tell everybody about racing. It's the, like, the feeling that you get when you win it's unmatched like nothing else will give you that you're second and it's like ah oh, dang it you know because that difference of feeling is like the whole, it's just a different universe um but yeah what do you think man <laughs> well i think that on street circuits you i mean detroit your win that was spectacular i mean what is it about you and street circuits how can you do some of the things that we see you do because th you know these guys are not scrubs these guys are some of the best drivers in the world and you blew by five or six guys on a restart how do you do that right honestly whenever we were done i was like dang we, we did, did we just do that um but man i just think it's uh, not getting too ahead of yourself in a way just like take it one by one um i knew i mean my mentality going into it honestly you know, we, we should have finished sixth that race. Um, but when the yellow came out, uh, I actually after the race, I texted Jimmy and I said, thank you, <laughs> because I wasn't going to catch the podium places um, if that yellow didn't come out. I mean, it's just, everybody on pace is just too, too tight, too, too similar. Uh, so I knew I needed just a pack up to be able to have a chance. And... Um, and I've, I have a lot of faith in myself with cold tires and when the car's moving around. And we got it done, man. Like, we got it done. And it was such a cool feeling. It was very different to Texas. Very different. Just very more like a, more like a yeah. And the Texas was like, oh, finally kind of feeling. But it was really cool, man. You're getting used to it. That's that's a, the thing. You're gonna be you're gonna be old hat at this. So something that you're probably not used to is driving on this circuit because no one's driven on it. Obviously, How cool so, is it? We're, we're racing over a freaking bridge. Have you? Did you walk it yeah, yesterday? Uh, we walked it yesterday. How cool! We did a video. You can watch it on my okay, channel. I will watch it. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's um. So how do you prep for a track like this? I mean, what can you do? Honestly, you kind of just have to take it as it comes to you my way of going about it is just you just have to feel things out the the sim will prepare you into like where you're going but it will not give you any sensation of what it's going to feel like just the the tightness of it and just like bumps here bumps there the braking here slippery here or downhill here it just you, you get those whenever you're actually in the car and you're getting all the feelings from the actual race car um so the best thing you can do is just like test what the limit is the problem is there's a wall next to you and when you mess up you're pretty much going into it so it's like you, there, ha there has to be kind of like a cautious side of you but you, you have to ship it man you, you have to you have to explore that that's the best thing you can do explore because if you don't then you're gonna be a step behind if it comes to qualifying and um, experiment different lines because the bridges is smooth and then in some other places it's very bumpy there's like railroad tracks across so you know sometimes inside is less bumpy than outside or outside is less bumpy than inside so that's where lines can get a little tricky but we won't really know until we go out today right well i mean we don't even know if we've nailed the setup either so we're kind of just leveling out like see where where our bottoming is and practice one is going to be I'd be surprised if we get more than like 15 or 20 minutes of running. Ooh. A so, green flag. So, so that's kind of what leads into my last question, which is I think we're all expecting chaos this weekend. I mean, how can you handle a race that, that's going to be probably a wreck fest? Don't panic. <laughs> Don't panic. <laughs> uh, and when it comes to show timing, I mean, qualifying is going to be everything, man. Mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I don't even know how many laps we're doing. I'm assuming it's going to be around 100, which is, do you know how many laps uh, we're doing? 80. 80? Okay. Um, I have no idea where the lap is going to be either, like either a minute or a minute 15. But I really hope it doesn't fall into a fuel save race because we're, we're, we're always at a deficit there. Mm. And uh, it's just we have to work on it with, 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 with Team Chevy and, 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 and we need to make our, our car better. But 
Yeah. I don't know, man. I'm also kind of like, well, let's let's see let's see, let's see what's heading our way. <laughs> it's going to be an exciting race, and I I think this guy's going to make it exciting. Thank you, Pato. Thanks, man. Cody Ware, this is your second uh, official IndyCar race, first on a street circuit. What are you expecting, or can you expect anything? I think, yeah, not much to expect other than just uh, to take it slow. You know, obviously soak it in and make sure that we you know don't make any you know rookie mistakes here on a street course. I'm pretty happy with you know our debut at Road America, so I want to capitalize on that and just continue to have the same mindset, keep the car in one piece, get through all the sessions, and I think if we do that and take the checkered flag on Sunday, it'll end up being a pretty good weekend, so that's all I'm looking forward to, really. You got some super experienced teammates. Um, how important has that been uh, in your process of adapting to an Indy car? That's been really good, you know, to be able to look at, uh, when we went testing with, with Roman at uh, Road America, to look at his data, get feedback directly from, you know, an, F, an F1 driver was really an awesome experience. He's definitely taken some of that learning curve and definitely kind of, you know, mellowed it out a little bit. So to be able to be around some veterans of the sport, you know, my first couple races in, I think, really has made my life a little bit easier. And then to also get to talk to guys like Jimmy, who are kind of doing the same transition over here, it's been good to get a lot of different perspectives on this. So I really couldn't ask for a better way to be a part of this. Obviously, you guys are, you're not just a driver. You know, you're, you're also representing a team, your dad's team, Rick Ware Racing. And you guys seem to be pretty committed to IndyCar. I mean, how, how, how committed are you guys? Are you guys going to be here next year? You know, how many cars potentially? I mean, what are you, what are you guys looking, looking to accomplish here? Yeah, I think we'll definitely be back full-time next year. I don't know how many cars, but we'll definitely see another RWR car in the Indy field for next year. Um, not sure who the driver with the lineup will look like, but you know, we're committed to building the brand and, and continuing to race in various forms of motorsport as well as uh, stepping up our cup program next year. So I think we'll probably be going down to one or two cars for next year in the cup series. That way we can not just expand, but also improve what we're already doing. So I think slowly but surely we're doing that, showing people that we're trying to make the best of what we have, but also improve and, and put our money where our mouth is and get better through the coming years. I know that uh, you didn't get to do the Indy 500 just this year. That was a, a goal of yours. Didn't quite get there. Uh, you mentioned an extra car. Uh, would, that wouldn't necessarily be you, would it? Yeah, possibly. I definitely want to make it. I think, um, you know, as par part sponsorship, part a personal decision, I think that making the debut at the 500 would have been a very daunting task, especially having to qualify in. So I think that taking the approach we're taking now, showing people that we can get through these races and be smart, I think going to an oval next year after running several starts will definitely ease a lot of the competitors' minds and also show that we want to do this the right way and not rush the process. So I think that, you know, it may take pa patience and it does suck a little bit, but at the end of the day, you know, I got a lot of, lot of racing left in me. So if we make it in a couple years, that'd be great. Sebastian, uh, you really had your greatest success when this series was the majority street circuits and you really didn't have a lot of the tools to prepare for brand new street circuits like you do now. So is your race prep for Nashville any different or, than it was when you, know, you were in Champ Car or is it a little bit different now that you have more tools? It's a little bit different but not dramatically so. Um, yeah, back in the days, obviously, there was no sim work. Uh, the, the, the team would run like simulation from, you know, a, a digital layout and, and try and figure the gears out and the roughness and ride heights and things. But now it's obviously a lot more in depth. Uh, the OEMs obviously have massive simulator resources to try and help us prepare. That's the first time that I ever obviously uh, drive a virtual track <laughs> that hasn't even been built yet so obviously it leads to a few different visual differences but still it, it gives you a pretty good sense of you know how things are working out and uh, um, but yeah I mean it, it is it is quite different as far as we're concerned we didn't spend a crazy amount of time on it but uh, but it's still a lot better than just showing up having no idea of if the track turned left or right. <laughs> So what's that process like as a driver once you actually get out onto the track on a new circuit like this? Uh, how do you, how, I mean, because that's, that's the thing like from the outside is how do you, because I walked that track yesterday, it's so bumpy and narrow. How do you build up to running quick lap times in an hour session? I don't, I don't think much changes with that. You know, I mean, obviously once you get in the car, it's all about comfort, confidence, uh, trusting what you got, and, and then obviously having the, tr the car where it needs to be. Um, so if you've done a, and the team has done a great job and the car is perfect or right there straight away, uh, everything comes easy and, and it happens fast. If not, uh, it can be quite, you know, challenging and take, you know, a good chunk of the, the, the free practice session that you got. So, you know, we'll, we'll see. I mean, I honestly, I almost want to tell you, uh, come back, talk to me at five o'clock once we've done it, you know? <laughs> well, that's the thing is that 
the kind of common consensus with all the drivers is that it's going to be chaotic. There's going to be a lot of that yellow, and there's going to be a lack of track time. Is that what you're expecting, or is it just, you know, come back and talk to you at five? Well, I hope not, because obviously we only have really that one long session. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like it could be weather disrupt. Uh, disrupted, so yeah, I, I hope not, because uh, if on top of that we don't get track time, then that could be challenging, but uh, yeah, I, I hope everybody takes his time, because yeah, if it's if it's hampered by yellow flags all the time, uh, I think I'm, I'm always one to just try and really get a feel for the track and, and build up, you know, speed in kind of the last half hour or something, because you just, you just don't want to put yourself in, in a bad spot and, you know, hurt the car or, uh, or you know, have a serious crash and then be out by the time when the track is actually gripped up and, and looking better closer to what it will be later down in the weekend. So uh, I hope everybody gets a bit more of a careful approach and, and builds up to it so we can all you know benefit from the track time. So is that is that kind of the key to success on street circus? Is it, is it just all about patience or is there that point where you have to just send it and hope it sticks? No, I mean, for sure it comes, you know, when it comes to crush time, obviously you have to go. Uh, but the first 45 minutes of, uh, of the first practice session might not be that. Yeah. Fair enough. Thank you very much, Sebastian.